What is going on today guys, Tomcat here, and today we are back for another episode of Forza Horizon 2, where I'm going to be kicking off a brand new series on my channel called Drift Routes. Now, Drift Routes are is basically similar to Drift Spots, but it's basically, it's more than one spot. So, I came up with the idea for this series after um, just driving around and free roaming so much in the game and just finding so many cool little areas to drift that I figured I might as well share these little routes with you guys because, you know, maybe you guys don't, some of you don't have time to just roam around in the game and you just kind of want to go right through the story um, and don't really know um, where some of these spots might be or some of these routes. And basically what this series is really for is to introduce new players of the game to routes that they may not have known or spots that they may not have known or anybody that's new to drifting in Horizon 2, um, it'll introduce them to some fun little challenges as well. So, I'll show you where we are on the map. We're right up here in Sisteron, and we're actually right here, right at the Pagani Zonda Cinque uh, bucket list challenge. It makes this one really easy to find. So basically, you're going to park right in front of the Zonda Cinque. You could park back there, you could park up here, it doesn't really matter. But what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and launch it. And I'm just showing this in third person for uh, just so it's a little bit easier to follow. But you're going to kick the rear end out right here at this roundabout. And you're going to do at least one lap of the roundabout. At least one drift lap of the roundabout. And I originally considered um, making it two laps. But I thought, eh, I mean, it's it's really more up to the... Wow, Fiesta, I guess I am doing two laps. But um, anyway, I guess it's more up to the, uh, the player um, to choose whether they want to do one or two laps. It doesn't really make that big a difference so I get around this fiesta and then your next obstacle is to actually drift around this little uh not spire but um but tower and then from there you're actually going to go down here narrowly miss this tree bring it back around almost get hit by an rsx and um then head back here into this alleyway kick it sideways get a little bit close to the wall not too close but just a little bit and then from there you're going to e-brake hard 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 right through this arch do another lap of that. Wait till you actually get through it. There we go. And then you're going to head up the hill. Kick it back to the right. And end up right back where you started. Now, that that was by far not my best run um, on that uh, little course. I did a much better run a little bit ago. But I think um, the reason for that was uh, was I wasn't talking when I did that, uh, that actual run. So I'll go ahead and show you guys a couple of the... Um, couple of the specific spots that um, that might give people a little bit of a uh, little bit of a problem when they're first trying it I'll try and run it again actually and see if there's less traffic this time and you can e-brake into this first roundabout you can clutch kick into it you can just use momentum you can 360 entry into it whatever you really want to do it just depends on your level of, um, of skill depends on uh, how you just really how you want to do it these routes are by no means um, set in stone or anything like that. You can feel free to um, to try them out and then change them up however you want. You do not have to try these routes the same way I'm doing them. Um, they are totally open-ended and they don't follow any set of rules or anything like that. This is, like I said, a completely open-ended thing and it's completely free, for, like just freedom for you guys to um, to have an idea. My The point of these routes actually is for me to give you guys an idea of something that you can try and then for you guys to take it from there and then really turn it into something that that you guys really like. I mean, you can even you could even take it back around, jump drift it back and maybe go the other way. I didn't actually try that before. You you'd probably want to go the other way to keep your momentum going. But that's kind of hard with that Zonda Chinque there. Yeah, that'd be really weird. But um, the biggest thing that I think with this one is that you have to be a little bit precise with where you use the e-brake. I'll call it out, actually. I'll do the run again, and I'll call it out uh, when I'm using it. I'll try to use it a little bit more um, than I normally would just to kind of exaggerate it a little bit. And it's going to be easier because it's raining now. But, um, wow, they still haven't moved that little Fiesta. It's still there. But the biggest thing... Wow, get the... Jeez, get the back end of the car out. Um, the biggest part of using the e-brake is right here. You'll go down to first... And then you'll be on the e-brake quite a bit coming in. 
You'll be powered out, a little bit of a tap of the e-brake. And always remember that if you want to be able to keep that flow going, you want to e-brake and clutch in, the, clutch in at the same time, and you hope that a Fiesta doesn't get in your way again. And the really the biggest trick with getting close to obstacles is to be to be confident of where your car is. Like for example, this previous uh, not previous but this last obstacle really teaches you to get a little bit of control. You could do it in the rain, you could do it in the dry, you could do it pretty much whatever you want. But to get the front end of that car right up to it is it's a little bit of an exercising control, and it's not it's not as hard as a lot of people might think. But, um, I mean, you can even practice control by doing a lap around that Zonda right there at the end and then just finishing right here. You could really, like I said, you could do it however you want. It's totally open-ended and totally up to you guys to do. But um, these little videos are going to be short, but not too short. They're not going to be like little tiny two-minute videos or anything like that. But generally sub-ten-minute videos that will really, um, really show you guys a couple of these, not a couple of these spots, but pretty much all the spots that I end up finding. I will make a little showcase video like this for you guys, so you guys can check it out. Um, you can run it in, you can really, you could run it in reverse, you could um, add other sections into it to where you're basically doing a whole lap of Sisteron, and this is just a little bit of a piece of it. But again, hope you guys enjoyed, hope that really uh, helps you out, hopefully that gives you some ideas of what you can do, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe for more, and I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you guys later.